Hello everyone and uh, welcome to my debut video for YouTube. Uh, my name is Craig and I'm a collector of various things like DVDs, CDs, records, comic books and all along that sort of line. I um, thought I'd like to show you some of the comics that I've been picking up in the last three months. So um, I'll kick off with the first one. This is uh, Team Youngblood number one from 1993. And this is an image comic. And um, by the way, um, I'm going to be showing you in this video all my DC and indie comics that I've been picking up. And in the next video, which I'm going to do, is going to be all my Marvel comics. So, there's that one anyway. Alright, this next one is a DC comic. This is called The Last Days of Animal Man. And it's number one, and it's from 2009. I'd like to pick up his first appearance one day, Animal Man. One of the Strange Adventure comics. I don't quite know what number. Um, this one is from Acclaim. Uh, Solar Man of the Atom. And this is number 39. There was also a run of these comics in the 60s as well. Um, originally done by Gold Key. next one I picked up a couple of days ago. Um, this one is uh, Swamp Thing number 46 from 1986 and this is a uh, Crisis of Infinite Earths Time comic. Wonderful artwork. Um, Stephen Bassetti and John Totleben, I think that's how it's pronounced, with Alan Moore as the writer. Wonderful artwork inside as well, wonderful. This next one, um, this is actually an underground comic from 1980, um, Last Gasp Company. Uh, this is Zippy number three. Quite a big sized comic this one. I think it's probably bigger than a lot of 40s, like Golden Age comics, because they're quite sort of wide and a lot bigger than a lot of the modern comics you get today. That's Sippy number three. Well, before I go on to the uh, more older comic books, I'm going to show you a book now that I picked up last week actually. Um, this is a Batman book, it's a soft back. But I actually prefer the cover to the hardback edition. This is uh, quite a special book, really. Um, it's called Bat Manga, and this has got a, like a little dust jacket on it as well. To tell you, you don't re actually read the book from the front; you actually read it from the back. I don't know if that's the way Japanese people read their books, comic books, or or what. I don't know, but. It's an unusual item anyway, all the same. And I didn't pay very much for this neither. There's the back cover. I'll actually take the dust jacket off and then I can show you the picture in full, both sides. I did not pay very much for this book at all. As I could have done if I bought the hardback, but I actually prefer the, the pictures on the cover of the softback, so... There's that one, that's the back cover, which looks like the front. And then there's the front cover, which looks like the back. With Adam West and Bert Ward. Yeah, very nice to have. This book is actually um, all original Japanese comic strips. Early manga, as they say, so all from the 60s. Right, now we go on to our more older comic books. 
This is uh, a DC one from 1964, January 64. This is Black Hawk number 192. And he uh, is taken on King Condor with his fabulous birds. This next one is uh, World's Finest, number 177, 177, from 1968. And as you can see, it's got the Joker and Lex Luthor on the front cover. As well as Batman and Superman, obviously. Um, this is actually uh, originally done by Ross Andrew, the cover art, who uh, went on to do a run of... Um, the Amazing Spider-Man in, uh, in the 70s, around about 74, 75, I think that's what it is anyway, so yeah. There's that comic, World's Finest number 177. Um, this is Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen, number 137. And as you can tell, this is a Jack Kirby cover with art inside, also by Jack Kirby. And it's uh, keen to know that the actual inks is uh, done by um, Neil Adams, who is obviously a very well-known and renowned art comic artist. And uh, it's good to know that he actually collaborated with Jack Kirby on the cover, so... That's from 1971. Hope the glare ain't getting too much for the uh, actual picture of the video, so on the comics. Um, this is one I actually picked up uh, locally from my hometown. This is uh, Justice League of America number 172 uh, from 1979. And uh, this is a Dick Giagando cover. Very nice cover indeed. And I hardly paid very much for that, so yes. Um, this one is Justice League of America number 170. Also from 1979. Very nice cover as well by Dick Dillon and, uh, no, is it Dick Dillon? Yeah, Dick Dillon and uh, Dick Giordano as well. Giordano. Hmm, that's that. Um, this one I actually picked up today, and I thought I'd show you it now. Uh, this is Justice League of America number 73. And this is a bit of a key issue. This has got some of the members of the Justice Society appearing in it for the first time. I think it's the first appearance of the Golden Age Superman. And it's a very nice comic. Good cover as well by Joe Kubert. So, and uh, this is uh, my final Justice League of America um, comic I'm going to show you now. This is uh, number 46 from 1966 with an excellent battle cover. It's got um, Batman, Sandman and Wildcat taking on Solomon Grundy, Blockbuster and the Antimatter Man, who doesn't appear to be on the cover. It says at the bottom, too overwhelming to be shown on this cover. Which makes all the more interesting. You sort of want to look and find out, really. But there's that one anyway. This is a, um, this is a Mike Sikowski and Joe Giella cover. So, yeah. That was one of the first comics I picked up in the month, in the month, or in the last few months. The pack I am showing you, so. Alright, this one is uh, Strange Adventures number 221 from 
December 1969. An excellent cover by Murphy Anderson. With Adam Strange on the front. Striking cover indeed, I love it. And uh, it's keen to know that these are actual reprints in this comic, but the cover just caught my eye so much that I had to have it. And I think the reprints are mainly from like the early 60s and that, so... <clears throat> right, this one's a key issue, and this is still um, Strange Adventures. This is number 206 from 1967. And this is a key issue for the fact that um, it's the second appearance of Dead Man. And uh, this comic's in very fine. It's a lovely copy. And I didn't pay as much as I should have paid for it, considering the condition. So yes, I'm very chuffed with that. I'm now about to show you my uh, selection of uh, House of Mystery comics that I've picked up recently. This is the first one, um, House of Mystery number 172, from 1968. And it appears on the cover, it's got a flying octopus attacking an Indian on a flying horse. Which is quite mad. How, how the hell do you get a flying octopus? weight is just a bit, a, bit, a bit much for it to get in the air I think yeah quite a mad cover anyway this next one is uh, House of Mystery number 171 with an absolutely fantastic cover from Nick Cardi great use of colours with a black back background it works very well for me my eyes but uh, yeah that's a mystery number 171 house of mystery number 169 and these covers are all mainly done by Jim Mooney who went on to do various things for Marvel and that later on House of Mystery number 168 with the Hoopster battling Moon Man. Crazy some of the ideas DC come up with in their comics, especially in the 60s. I actually received two copies of that comic, but I sold one to my brother. And also, I gave him a copy of this, as I had two copies, but it wasn't in great shape, so I didn't charge him for it. But this is uh, number 167. And I'll, th I'll thank um, Captain Strangelife uh, for actually showing us these comic books on, an earlier, on, an, on one of his videos. He inspired me to pick up these items so I'm most chuffed with that thank you uh, this is uh, House of Mystery number 166 and I love the cover it looks like a golden age cover Yankee Doodle Kid versus Cougar Man <laughs> this is House of Mystery number 165 got possibly some of the maddest looking characters I've ever seen especially one of them in the corner here they're called Whoses Wattses and Houses and Wattses is just possibly the maddest superhero supervillain character I've ever seen I don't know how he'd get about in a costume like that, but <laughs> I love the madness of that comic. Great. Uh, 
this one is uh, House of Mystery number 161. With uh, the plant gorilla attacking Hornet Man. More crazy ideas from the world of DC. Alright, this is uh, number 157 of House of, House of Mystery, and this is a um, second appearance of uh, Dial H for Hero. Supercharge, the Human Bullet, and Radar Sonar Man. This is uh, the final House of Mystery comic I'm going to show you now. This is uh, actually a key issue. This is uh, House of Mystery number 156. And this is uh, the first appearance of uh, Dial H for Hero. I got all these House of Mystery comics rather cheap, so I'm very chuffed. And especially chuffed to have this one. Right, that's all the main gist of uh, DC Comics now. Anyway, I'm going to show you um, a couple of uh, independent comics now. And um, this one is The Human Fly, number one, from 1958, IW. IW Comics Company. And uh, this is a very strange comic indeed. Because the human flies on the cover, and it's a fantastic cover by um, Carl Burgos, who actually done uh, the Human Torch, who created the Human Torch. But it's also keen to know, you, you, when you look through the comic, there's actually absolutely no sign of a human fly strip in it at all. And it's all originally re um, reprinted out of a um, Blue Beetle comic from the uh, 1940s. And they're very good strips anyway, but it's just weird that this comic is uh, called The Human Fly, and yet he's not in it. Very odd indeed, but I'm, I'm still very happy with it. I like oddities like this. So, yeah. Um, this one is a EC comic, Entertaining Comics, from 1955, and this is Impact Number One, with the classic Master Race story, with a lovely cover also by Jack Davis, and this is the actual Master Race story, which uh, they've used for the front cover. And it's a very classic story. It's one I very much recommend if you're into all this sort of horror, you know, sort of 50s comics and that. So yeah, yeah, I recommend that. Take a look if you ever get the chance. Right, this one is uh, Space Ace. Or Major Inner Pack, The Space Ace, number one, 1951. With an absolutely tremendous Bob Powell cover. And he's actually renowned for doing lots of good covers, especially for timely comics. You know, and uh, Mr. Mystic, Sheena Queen of the Jungle. Yeah, he's very renowned, he's a very good artist. And I'd like to get more sort of, you know, comics with covers by him and that, so. This didn't cost me very much at all, 8 to £10. And it's in great condition as well, so. Yeah, I'm most happy with that. And by the way, this comic actually um, is a free giveaway comic with, um, what, the chocolate drink in a pack. Which is uh, quite interesting to know. So yeah, 
Very good. Right, this one is actually uh, a Golden Age one I've picked up today. Um, it's another independent comic, and it's from 1942. And this is uh, Blue Bolt, Volume 3, Number 5. And I love the cover. There's a, a lot going on. There's like a man holding a skull behind a door, waiting for this man here to walk through and at the same time he's also got like a skeleton in a cloak with a bone about to attack him and also up here you've got a kid with an urn looks like he's about to attack him also and then what's going on in the background here is also very interesting it looks like they're race they're chasing after him so Whatever this bloke has done, I don't know, but he seems like he's not he's gonna be in a bit of a bit of a fix if I do say so myself. There you go, that's Blue Bolt. Volume three, number five from nineteen forty two. And the final comic book for the day. What I'm going to show you is a DC one again, and um, I picked this up about a week or two ago. Um, this is from 1945, and uh, this is Adventure Comics number 100, which features um, Sandman. Almost forgot his name just then. Other features such as Starman as well and uh, some more obscure sort of strips. But it's really keen to know about this, the background of this comic book because um, it says here that the cover art was originally done by Simon and Kirby and I'll bring that up close as it says. And, um, you know... You sort of see the name and you think, oh, yeah, that's Simon and Kirby Art. No problem at all, you can sort of tell. But in actual fact, I found information about this and um, it's actually Gil Kane what did the art. Gil Kane, or Gil Kane, is it pronounced? And uh, he was actually ghosting for Simon and Kirby in this issue. I'm not too sure whether either of them might have made a little few touches to the cover or the inside strip because the strip was also done by Gil Kane as well. So uh, I think what they were doing at the time they were actually um, teaching him the ways of comic books and art and all that sort of thing so he was sort of a beginner at that time Gil Kane but obviously went on to do lots of amazing strips later on especially in the 60s with Green Lanterns Spider-Man in the 70s so yeah Adventure Comics number 100 from 1945 and that's it for my uh, for my first video um, in my next one I'm going to be showing you all my Marvel comics and maybe a little couple of things which I might pick up sort of later on. So thanks for watching. Um, take care of yourselves and be good. Thank you very much.